Will you stand, please? I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God the Almighty and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God is its light and its lamp is the Lamb. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them. For it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as God as a little child will never enter it. As he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and he blessed them. Amen. Good afternoon, my friends. And welcome to the Lake Highlands Presbyterian Church for this worshiping experience where we are taking some time to celebrate the life of Tama Brown. Brown, we are great, grateful that you all are here on today to say thank you to the Lord for the life of Tama with her amazing family. If you would please join me in a word of prayer. Creator God, we thank you for your love, for your grace and your mercy for the opportunity that once again you have allowed us to gather in your house to worship you. And with all of the things that we can say thank you for today, right now we say thank you for Tama. Her life, her witness, her sacrifices, her experiences, all that she was, all that she did, and for the fact that we all got a chance to meet her, we all got a chance to know her, we say thank you again. Now be with us as we lift you up. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Will you stand please for our opening hymn? Our opening hymn will be number 649, Amazing Grace.
My friends, will you remain standing, please, as we say the 23rd Psalm together. It's printed in your bulletin for today. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Amen. You may be seated, my friends. Our first scripture reading for today, or our Old Testament scripture reading, is Ecclesiastes chapter 3, the first eight verses. Please, my friends, listen and read along. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born, a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to throw away stones. And a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. The New Testament reading is the first four verses of John chapter 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Amen. My friends, I know that our program asks for personal reflections but there will not be any given during this worshiping experience. But if there are some expressions or some reflections that any of you might have for the family, I would encourage you to catch them after this worshiping experience and share them with them. Let us pray. Prepare us, Lord, to hear from you. In Jesus' name, amen. Please listen to these words from Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The word of the Lord.
Jesus says his yoke is easy and his burden is light. I must confess, my friends, I am not a country boy. Born in the city, raised in the city. Now, my father was a country boy, born in that rural area of Kentucky, Lisman in Providence, Kentucky. My mother was a city girl, so we would visit the country from time to time. And I messed up some tractors. They shouldn't have put me on them. I don't know what I'm doing, but I, I did. I had some problems with some, some equipment going to visit my relatives there in the country. I know what a yoke is. I've seen yokes. When I was a kid, I always got those confused with egg yolks. But I do know what a yoke. <laughs> I know what a yoke is. I've seen put people put animals in yokes and plows behind the yokes in order to take care of the fields where they were going to be planting seeds. So yes, I have seen it. I've just not done it. And at this point in my life, I'm not really particular about ever doing it. But nevertheless, yes, I have I've seen it. And when animals are yoked together under that wooden frame, Usually, one animal has a little bit more experience than the other. That animal is considered to be the leader of this tandem and will help the less experienced animal in the task that is before them. Life, my friends, may have lots of highs and laughs and mind-blowing experiences and great adventures, but life also can be very hard. Life can also be very complicated. And what Jesus is offering in this text is for all of us to discard the awkward and heavy yoke of life and take the easier yoke that Jesus provides. Now, what makes it easier? Well, you, you see, Jesus will never leave us. Jesus does not leave us. Actually, Jesus stays with us all the way through our lives. Even when at times we do things that may cause other folks to leave us, Jesus stays. Even when at times we've done nothing to hurt anyone whatsoever, and people still leave us, Jesus stays. And when Jesus is our Lord and Savior, he actually takes the other side of the yoke and leads us. Amen, amen. He leads us. You see, the yoke becomes easy because of Jesus. The burdens of life are manageable because of Jesus. If we look at it realistically and honestly, we really need the giver of life to be yoked to us to be able to navigate life. The one who, who experienced the worst that life could give to be yoked to us. To help us experience our difficult days, our complicated times. Yes, the yoke is easy because of Jesus. The burdens of life, yes, are manageable because of Jesus. You see, my friends, this is the kind of life that Tama had. One where she was yoked to Jesus. Tama was a longtime member of this church. She served as best as she could when she 
could. And many of us have amazing and fond memories, wonderful memories of Tama, great conversations that we would have with Tama. And I was thinking about this when I put this message together and someone shared this with me before we even walked into the sanctuary. One of the times that you got a chance to see Tama really shine and really smile is when she talked about y'all. When she shared thoughts of her family, how happy she was, how proud she was of her family. And oh, I would love to tell you that Thomas' life was a crystal stair, but it wasn't. The last years for Thomas were very difficult, very challenging. There were times when I would go to see her in her group residence and she was struggling there. Her voice was, was, was soft and was meek when she would talk to me under those conditions and she would tell me how hard it was for her there. I saw her many times in the hospitals and she was struggling. One of our own church members oftentimes would bring her here to church on Sundays through the years and she would struggle here even. In the house of God, she would struggle during those times. And many of you and many members of this church, you got a chance to visit with her as well. And sometimes those visits were challenging visits. They were difficult visits. And you may ask, parent, during all of that, was she still yoked? Was she still, because she possibly had still been yoked to Jesus? Was her burden actually lighter then? And I say to you, yes. Yes. I know the Lord was still with her. No matter how challenging things were. They could have been worse. Hello, somebody. Think about yourself. Think about the worst day that you've ever had in life. And I assure you, it could have been worse. So yes, I say the Lord was still with her. And I wish that I could tell you that you will leave this life peacefully. Lying in your favorite bed with your favorite song being played around you and all of your family members and friends around you speaking wonderful things about you before you pass on into the ever after. I wish I could tell you that. And for some of us, that may happen for others, it may not. But my point, my friends, is to make sure that your life is a life that Jesus was Lord of. That Jesus was in charge of, that Jesus was yoked to you in. Because Tama now has something Jesus quickly promises in this text. As Jesus says, come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Rest. Is that not what we all want? Rest. From lies, give me rest. From money problems, give me rest. From sickness, give me rest. From depression, give me rest. From anxiety, give me rest. From difficult folks, give me rest. From the problems I've created, give me rest. 
rest. An old gospel song put it this way. I'm free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. No longer bound, no more chains holding me. My soul is rested, and that's another blessing. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, I'm free. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, I'm free. Tama is free. Tama is resting. And this is what I believe. Doesn't matter what you go through down here. It pales in comparison to the rest that we will get with the Lord in Jesus name amen will you stand please as we sing our doxology I say this often as we move to this part of our worshiping experience, and I will probably say this as long as the Lord gives me breath. But in just a few moments, we're going to have our prayer, our great prayer of thanksgiving. And in the midst of this prayer, we are going to say the one that the Lord taught us. And here in a Presbyterian church, when Tamahu was a Presbyterian, we, we use the words debts and debtors when we say the Lord's Prayer. And I know that many of you may come from different traditions, but I just want you to know that here we say debts and debtors, but if you slip up and you say trespass and those who trespass against us or sins and those who sin against us, I just want you to know that that's all right. That's perfectly, perfectly fine. The Lord be with you. Oh, Lord, we thank you for this day and your grace and your mercy. We thank you for all that you have done and all that you have provided for us, for you have been good. You have been better to us than we have been to ourselves, oh, Lord. And right now, again, we stand before you. We stand before your throne and we say thank you for Tama. We do, Lord. We thank you for her life. All that she did while she was here. All of the good that she brought to people while she was here. Dear Lord, we say thank you for. And for the simple fact that we all got to know her. We say thank you for this as well. And now, Lord, as we celebrate her life today and days to come, we pray for her family. Be with her family, dear Lord. Hold them close to you at this time. Especially in those moments where the questions arise, could I have done more? Should I have done more? We ask that you would give them comfort. Comfort in understanding and in knowing that the best is what was given. Be with this church, dear Lord. 
as we continue to move on in this existence without our sister. Knowing and believing that she is resting with you. So hear us today as we pray to you, O Lord. And hear us now as we say the prayer that you taught us. And as we say it together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. My friends, please listen as we give the commendation. Into your hands, O oh merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Thomas Brown. Acknowledge, we humbly pray, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest and everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. My friends, we are going to conclude our time together by singing It Is Well With My Soul. And I want you to know that much of this program, Aaron, her son, Thomas' son, put together. And we're thankful for him and for the family as a whole as well. But we're going to sing It Is Well With My Soul. And then after this, we encourage and invite all of you to join this family in Shelton Hall, our fellowship hall for a small reception and a time of visiting and gathering. But I know that this is today. This is today. This is right now. And we're going to love this family really good today and right now. But I want all of us to remember that tomorrow's coming and the next week and the next month. And the years will come. And we still want this family to know that we love them. That we're here for them. And the reason why we want them to know this is because this is Thomas' family. And Thomas' family is our family. Amen? Amen. Will you stand, please, as we prepare to sing? When people
to join us in Shelton Hall after this worshiping experience. Now may the grace of God, the love of Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, abide in each of us now and forevermore. Amen. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though